If you've been watching the prior two videos, you now have the knowledge to create or find MIDI accompaniments. To adjust those accompaniments to desired tempos and instrumentation and to convert the MIDI files to audio files. That's a lot. But now you're ready to practice with the files and even to create a recording with your performance added to the accompaniment. MIDI and MP3 files can be played on a computer with VLC Media Player for PC or Mac, Windows Media Player for PC, and QuickTime for Mac. Downloads for these programs are easily available and probably your computer already has one installed. Smartphones work best with MP3 files. Video 2 in this series presented a number of ways to easily convert MIDI files to MP3 files. Smartphones and computers usually cannot generate as much sound as a musical instrument, so either external speakers need to be used or earbuds or earphones. Most find it easiest to practice leaving one ear open and one with the earbud inserted or the earphone covering. This allows for the musician to hear the accompaniment in one ear and an authentic sound of their instrument or voice in the other. Let's start with an introduction I provided to one of my online courses. This demonstration uses Audacity, but the principles here will work well with other digital audio workstations. If you're already comfortable with setting sound levels and recording, please skip the next four minutes of this video. The first thing to always do is to save your project. Start out by saving it. Save project as. And notice this warning. This is an Audacity project, not an audio file. Uh, I know that, and that's what I want to do. So, okay. And I will save this... Um, yeah, let me save this in a place I'm reserving for all my videos. I'm going to create a new folder. Call this Audacity. And let's call this Composition 4. So I know all of my Audacity files for Composition 4 will be saved in this area. And I will be able to go back to that. And I can just call this Comp. Composition 4. Very good. Before you start recording, you should monitor your microphone setting. Mine is pretty good. This is, this is working out well. If it's not good, then you may want to vary this volume a little bit. Notice if I put it down a tiny bit more, and if I go up higher, I need to have it right around this area, then it seems to be pretty good. However, there may be some of you that changing this microphone here has no effect or help at all. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how you do that on a Mac, but you'll need to make a setting change and increase the volume for your microphone. On PC, however, you need to go to Control Panel, and then in your Control Panel, you'll find a setting that says Hardware and Sound. Select that. And you want to manage your audio devices. Double click on that. And you will get something that comes up with your, your sound. And you'll need to select your microphone. The microphone I'm using for this recording is a Samsung external microphone. You may be using a microphone in your computer. Let's see, recording. Need to double click on this and go to levels. And this is where you change your microphone level. Uh, we can see up above that the microphone level is, is really very good there. However, if I start moving it down, then the volume will get quieter. So for me, I have to have it really right around 80 
and then I can have a pretty good microphone level. Click OK or apply, OK, and that should take care of it for you. OK, good. So our microphone levels are fine at monitoring that. We've got the setting here that appears to get me a microphone uh, voice level that I like. So let's uh, start now recording. This is a test of my recording. One, two, three. This is a test. All right. So uh, it looks like the maximum sound level was a little bit above 12. Uh, that should be OK. Let's uh, hear the recording. This is a test of my recording. One, two, three. This is a test. OK. And you can see the high points are right in this area. OK, I may want it a little louder, which case I can boost this a little bit, and that would be fine. You do not want to have a soundtrack that is too quiet, because then you'll really have to boost it, and that adds extra sound uh, background noise. So it's better to have more volume in the beginning and then back off a little bit if you need to. Of course, we do not want it to go over zero because uh, that will create distortion. Now, at this point, I would encourage you to save what you've already created in case you want to come back to it later. So let's export the audio. And uh, we can go ahead and just export it as, as a uh, WAV file. So I'll call that Comp4 voice one and go ahead and just save that and uh, I'm not really going to worry about all of this stuff here okay so that's wonderful now I've got that saved in case I want to if I really liked it and as I'm starting to work on things um, I can come back to it before you record with your instrument or voice give some consideration to the setup of your equipment if you have an external microphone, place it two to three meters or six to nine feet away from you. It's best to point the microphone upward so that it will get some of the reverberation of the room. This picture shows where I placed it for the recording that you are about to hear. If you are using the built-in microphone in your laptop computer, place it off to the side so that you are not directly playing into the microphone. This picture shows a suggested placement. Now you're ready to record your playing or singing over an existing audio file. First, bring in the audio track. Next, you need to create a new track for your recording. Let's reduce this track a little bit uh, and then add a new stereo track. Now we can see both tracks on the screen. Put the cursor to the beginning. Put on the earphones, get ready to perform. And then when you're ready to perform, we've got the track selected, press record. Now you can adjust the balance between the two tracks if needed. The rhythmic errors in the piano part at the chord with the arrow point out that these are only practice arrangements, not arrangements for performance. Most of the recordings were made quickly by me and even a few under duress. Of course, this is just a rough recording. There are many other things that could be done to enhance the recording. I highly recommend the software Reaper if you wish to work with a more professional digital audio workstation. 
In conclusion, these three videos have provided important information about creating digital accompaniments, modifying the tempos and instrumentation, and using the accompaniments for practice or to make non-professional recordings. Be sure to see all of the great materials on 2read.net. These materials can help you to continue to advance as a musician. I wish you all the best in your music making. Bye.